Welcome back to Switch to Linux. And today I want to spend a little bit of time just talking about the portability of Linux. This is one of the greatest reasons I like to use Linux. It allows me to do interesting things like create a Linux distribution on a USB drive and then use that drive on any available computer. It actually means if the hardware dies out, no problem. Just get a new piece of hardware and throw the same old drive back into it. Now, almost all Linux distributions have this capability because very few Linux distributions are specific to the hardware. There are some that can in such be, like Gentoo, for example, which works really well on any given piece of hardware, but it's not as easy to port it to another system. But in our case here, we're going to talk about how you can transfer your system. And this is very significant, very important. And the reason I wanted to do the video today is because I actually just this weekend went through and uh, swapped my Arch system around. I'd been using Arch Labs in that computer now for two years, and it was always a little bit slow to boot, probably because I installed like three or four desktop environments on it at the time, played around with a couple different environments. But the reality is I found myself on Cinnamon almost all the time. So I decided I wanted to go ahead and rebuild the system. And at the same token, it was pretty much exactly the way I liked it. And so one of the factors I wanted to do is I wanted to encrypt the whole drive. It had not been in drive, uh, encrypted prior to this. Secondly, is I wanted to put it on an internal hard drive. You see, I've been running for two years my Arch computer on this. I could take this drive and put it into any system around here, but I have that particular PC set up, so if there is a USB drive that's bootable into it, plug that in, it boots off of that by default. And so I went ahead and always had that running on that computer, but the internal hard drive on that, there were two of them. One of those is my Linux Mint Plasma that runs um, on an SSD. That's kind of my backup in case everything else got, went bad. The other one was an old Windows 8 install that I hadn't booted into since probably 2016, 2017, somewhere around there. And then I found out about it, I don't know, a year or two ago, it, the boot wasn't working. It, it wasn't able to boot. Something got corrupted in the you know, in the boot up files of the disk. And so I spent two weekends ago trying to fix it. It took the entire day and Windows is extraordinarily frustrating. The only option I got down to is reinstall Windows if I wanted to actually keep the thing going on that computer. I'm like, why bother? I just don't need Windows. <laughs> so um, I did have a backup of that uh, of that computer. Now, if I had reinstalled Windows, it would have taken a long time to do that. And then you have to spend about a day or so getting all the updates in. And then I had to install a lot of programs. And then I had to move all of my data. That's kind of a pain. How does Linux work with its portability, however? Well, Linux is a little bit different in that everything is maintained on the the home folder. Now on Windows, there is a user app data folder where you can utilize this and transport it in a very similar manner, but not every program uses it the exact same way. There's a lot of other factors that, that go into it. And I can't actually take the hard drive out of one piece of hardware on Windows and just throw it into another piece of hardware and expect it to boot. It'll have issues with the license will match. You will notice that the, the hardware is not matched up. There's of course the check home. There's a lot of other factors. This guy here in the rare cases, I needed to use the media PC for other things, which I have had those cases. I just take this guy and throw it on, you know, my production computer, a spare laptop running around, boot off of it, and I have the exact same operating system. Very nice, uh, a couple years ago when I actually, I was, uh, I was actually at a camp and uh, I was doing some teaching, but I was also doing the photography and stuff for the camp. I literally just brought this drive with me. <laughs> so the regular computer that is on day in and day out was still with me. I just left the hardware at home. And I had to boot it into a couple times for some things I was doing, which was quite incredible. So 
leaving us back to this weekend, what I did is uh, I decided which arch do I want to do. I went with um, uh, I went with Endeavor OS, and the reason I went with Endeavor is it's very close to Pure Arch, but it doesn't take any time for me to look at screens. I thought about maybe ArchFi, but that's about an hour of looking at the screens, answering questions. I said, nah, I didn't want to mess with that. I liked Arch Labs. That was open to another choice as well, but I said, nah, we'll go ahead and and try another one. So I went with Entergoss. I set it up to install. It installed itself in, I don't know, 20 minutes. It, it was less time it took me to bake an apple pie. So I went ahead and set it all up to install, went down, baked my apple pie, come on back up. And um, uh, after coming on back up, it was all done. So I'm like, all right, now I just need to install some programs. So I, I had uh, I had the the hard drive booted into the other system so I can make sure I didn't miss any programs. Boot up a terminal, sudo pacman ssy, you know, um, ssy, whatever it is, <laughs> dash, uh, you know, sui, I think it is. And um, I went back through there and um, went ahead and uh, looked at all the software I had, just one line of code on pacman, pushed enter, Came back about an hour and a half later. All software's installed. I think it was only, it probably only took about an hour. I don't know. Um, I was busy for a while. So I <laughs> set it all up, came back an hour and a half later or so, and everything was all set up. Then I, what I did is I set up the uh, weekly news roundup on the production computer. I took this guy out, plug it right into the drive, and now it's a simple matter of copying the home directory from this system into the home directory of the old system. Literally, if I did not tell you that I changed the operating system, you wouldn't know. Every program was there, all settings were there. I, even Firefox even transferred its profile in. I didn't have to enter anything else into Firefox. It was literally like there was no change in the operating system at all. Everything is exactly the same. Everything is reconfigured the same, except there were a couple things that were not in the home directory. Um, my Firefox profiles, uh, which is my hardening guide for Firefox, that is actually in the Etsy directory, so I had to move that file over. I had to move over um, the themes that I had because I liked the themes that I that I liked on here with the, the cursors and the icons. Those were also in the USR share file, not in the home directory, although they could have been. And uh, after moving those over, though, everything else is exactly the same. Chirodoc exactly formulated where it was. Uh, all of the applications, all of their settings, I just boot up Kodi. Everything's exactly the same on Kodi. No change there. No re-inputting my libraries. No anything else. Uh, what other applications here did I do? I mean, literally everything. It was exactly the same thing. And I changed the entirety of the operating system. I wiped out the drive. I installed a new version of Arch. I pushed all the updates, installed the software packages, dropped the home folder on, and everything. I, I haven't missed a single beat. And that really is, to me, the power and the portability of Linux. So the take home message for you, if you are new to Linux, or maybe you've been around Linux and you didn't realize how easy it is, everything you need for your configuration is in that home directory outside of if you've installed system-wide themes or if you've done system-wide um, policies on Firefox or something like that. Um, all that kind of stuff is, all that stuff is just easy. It's right there. And you can very easily change things around. Now, I will note this. Uh, in this case, since I kept the same desktop environment, everything was the same. Your cinnamon settings will, will transfer with all that kind of stuff. I think I might have reset up the panel. Um, maybe I didn't transfer the settings for that. I, I did reset up the panel just the way I like the panel. But everything else was exactly the same. And so with that, the take home message is as long as you're not changing your desktop environment, transporting Linux from one version to the other is very easy. Now, where might you run into a snag? Well, as I said, Firefox profile, that actually surprised me that copying and pasting the profile worked because there was a period of time Firefox profiles did not transfer by copying the files. Maybe that's a bug that's resolved. Maybe it's because they were the exact same version on this, the exact same operating system being Arch. And I did make sure that both of them were fully up to date prior to transferring all of the files. Maybe that was it. But if you're going from like an Arch to a Debian, 
if there is a change in how a program holds the configuration files, that will not transfer over. But that's actually a fairly rare thing at this point in time. Most things don't change their configuration files. So there is our take home message today. Linux is highly portable. Whether it's installing it on a drive, pulling this drive out of the hardware, plugging it into another piece of hardware, and it will boot perfectly fine. Whether it's that, or whether we're just talking about rebuilding a system, copying that home directory. And another thing, it's actually very possible to map your home directory to a separate drive. And that way you can actually swap out your operating system anytime you want, and nothing ever changes anywhere because all of the settings are not even on that same disk. So with that, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.